Hey everybody, what's going on? Install Education back for another year. Uh, we're gonna start this year off right with uh, letting you save some money. So two of our favorite uh, people are the Core360 Belt and Human Locomotion, which is Dr. Thomas Shad. So don't forget, if you use the code Gestalt for the Core360 Belt, you get $5 off all belts, except for the ohm track sensors. So Brett, what about what, what are some of the Michaud's favorite, uh, some of your favorite Michaud uh, gadgets? Well, I mean, he's got a he's got a trunk full of gadgets, but I think my my favorite one definitely would be the we I mean, we use the Toe Pro quite a bit, mm -hmm. uh, the Toe Pro, and then I think the Varus and Valgus Post have really given people like a nice option if they're not want to take that leap into like a customized orthotic to kind of um, you know a good option for the patient, but also for, to let them kind of like you know bring the power back to the clinician to kind of decide where to post it. And so I, I think those are the two probably ones uh, of Tom's stuff that I love. And of course his tie, I can't get enough of his of his human locomotion. I mean the book is still to this day pure insanity. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Don't forget to use the code Gestalt on both those, the Core 360 belt, and then also Human Locomotion links are in all of our podcasts. And we hope you guys like today's episode. All right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Gestalt Education Show. Today, Brett, we are celebrating. We got a great bottle of wine here, Sheridan Vineyards Block One. This is from Yakima Valley, so uh, we've kind of been on a Washington kick lately. But the reason we chose this bottle is because today is our hundredth episode. So uh, Brett and I always joke about this project of ours with this podcast. It started literally on a whim. Uh, it started when we were drinking way too many seltzers during uh, the pandemic. We were playing too much bags, and uh, uh, we really didn't know what the hell was going to happen with gestalt with the office with the world uh, we we had no idea i mean it was kind of a trying time and i remember we had a lot of good heart, heart to heart conversations and uh we decided to say screw it and let's start putting some stuff out there and start recording things so and here we are our hundredth episode can you believe it no i really can't believe it i mean i, I think too i mean we knew there was so much travel that was already involved so it was kind of a no-brainer but i would say that you know it's just it's, the way that it's all gone down and the way that it's happened, I think, in, in the way that everybody's embraced it has been uh, so fun. I mean, the only person to big time us is the uh, CrossFitter. Uh, Froning. Froning. Yeah, Rich Froning. But uh, besides that, I don't think we've been told no yet. So it's been uh, it's been great. And people have really kind of swerved into it with us. And uh, it's been it's been it's been awesome, actually. That's right. So I I'm going to give you a little bit of a trivia here. I got to pull it up on my laptop, but don't look. So do you remember when our first episode was published? I The first one was Bill Morgan, right? It technically wasn't. We actually did two before Bill Morgan. What? Yeah. No, I don't yeah. So we did a, a, a regular one, a, a Gestalt Education Overview, which is 20 minutes long. And that was actually posted on uh, December 8th of 2020. So that was oh, technically our first okay. one. But that one, we kind of just talked about what Gestalt Education was. We kind of talked about the vision of the podcast and things like that. And it was brutal. <laughs> I went back and listened <laughs> to it and it was terrible. The second one was actually one of our most viewed, listened to was uh, Trigger Points. So that was our first one was Top Secrets in Practice, Trigger Points. It's still one of our most listened to one. And it was honestly awesome. Uh, it was kind of talking about the concepts that we we talk about with DNS. We talk about other people of, of, you know, there's casting shadows right now on whether or not a Trigger Point exists. We think that that's a complete lunacy, number one. And then also, you know, what, what are the, some of the causes of Trigger Points and things like that? So I thought that was a great little stepping stone. And then you're right. Our first guest was actually Bill Morgan. So uh, he was the first to our Clinical Savant series. We came up, I don't know if you remember this, we came up with the Clinical Savant tagline literally the day of on our flight to see him. You got a good memory. No, I so yeah, I, I was just kind of reminiscent on that if because uh, we, we kind of surprised him on it. If you if you go back and watch it and listen to it, we say you're our first guest on the on the Clinical Savant series. And it was a good one to, to start off with. You were there teaching uh, for a virtual summit. Uh -huh. And uh, but yeah, what a, what a there, there's probably no better person to kick us off on this journey than, than Bill Morgan. Huh? No, that was he's perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So today on our on our hundred episode, we, we really don't have anything planned. I mean, I, I literally just have a, a list of all of our crazy episodes that we've had and uh, we're just going to kind of drink some wine and shoot some shit and maybe reminisce on some good stories and I don't know just just kind of talk through some of the people that we we started off with so I think I'd start with the one um, that I thought was so good was oh I mean I, I, I mean in all different ways they're all good in their own way but I thought James Andrews like his he gave so much 
wisdom to a young clinician or to like an aging clinician. I thought there was, it was just like one amazing, like clinical pearl after another. And I think too, like growing up, I mean, at least in the orthopedic world, I mean, I, I've always just had the utmost respect for him, like dealing with players that he's operated on and just hearing the stories of how good his customer service is, how good his uh, bedside manner is. So just to actually like live it and to be able to ask him those questions. I felt like he did such a good job of answering them well and uh, even got emotional himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I just think like a, and a lot of our guests have actually gotten emotional. I think that's kind of been one of the more underrated things is we kind of make people um, kind of, you know, think back through their career. And a lot of times they get a little bit emotional because they haven't really, you know, been forced to do that. And, uh, and then, I mean, I think, you know, you and I, we each have different roles within the podcast and definitely my role has been kind of asking the question that I probably know everybody's wanting to hear, but maybe it hasn't been asked of them. And I think too, we, we, we decided from the beginning, I mean, this isn't a gotcha podcast and this isn't the place to, you know, be an asshole in our opinion. So, um, um, you know, we, we've always been respectful and, uh, and I think because of that, people have been respectful to us and we've mm -hmm. gotten, you know, we've gotten the information that we want, which is cause really what you're asking people to do is to, you know, deliver free content, you know, which is yeah. what, you know, people don't really want to do that. They're wanting to kind of like hold back, which, you know, I'd be the same way. However, I think if you ask the right question, you ask it the right way, then you, you're able to pull out more information than, um, then, then maybe they're wanting to give and, and that's kind of what your, your goal is really. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think yeah. just being, uh, yeah, going back to your point of not being a gotcha podcast, there's a lot of our guests that maybe early on in the first 10 minutes of the episode, they're waiting for that kind of kicker. You know, they're kind of almost like anticipating that. And it's just never been ours. We're, we're trying to ask difficult questions or ask questions that maybe will challenge it, but in a, in a respectful way of, allowing them to share their expertise with those questions. Well, I think too, I mean, we decided from the beginning with Gestalt education that it would be very dynamic, very plastic, nothing set in stone. And, you know, it's just kind of, you know, it's constantly evolving as we move different pieces around. And, you know, we have our core four, which of course, you know, the bedrock has been uh, the Motion Palpation Institute, Neurodynamics, DNS, and MDT. Mm -hmm. And then, from there, I mean, we've had, you know, I mean, of course, the ARTs, the FMS, SMFA, the Stecos, the dry needlings, the the functional medicine, the Annie O'Connors, you know, like we've tried to really just um, go after all the the heavy hitters in, in our in our field. And, and then in saying that, too, I mean, another one of our main tenants has been to really not bastardize anybody's, uh, you know, their system. So and what that really means is, you know, we don't want somebody if they walked into our office to look at what we're doing and be like, oh, gosh, that is just like such a watered down version of what I'm doing. So instead, we may not be doing it exactly the way that maybe they're doing it, but they would look at it and be like, wow, that that's pretty close. And I mean, I, I'm proud of what they're, what they're doing. So. Right. Uh, I think maybe let's just, I, we've had so many uh, clinical savants, but I, I'm just kind of looking through this list. I think one of the first ones that really surprised us was uh, George DeFranza. Yeah. So that, that one, uh, I would say, and you know, I always kind of bucket them together in my mind. I thought George DeFranza um, coupled with, uh, uh, let's see one we just did recently, uh, uh, Scapatici, Mark, yeah. like I felt like those two were very similar in that you had, you know, two KG veterans just basically unloading clinical pearls. Mm -hmm. I mean, unloading clinical pearls. Mm -hmm. So I thought like those were, um, some underrated ones. Uh, Mike Leahy, I thought crushed his podcast. Like mm -hmm. I felt like he just really gave a lot of good advice on, uh, you know, in, in a time when the world's telling us that you, you know, there's no reliability and palpation and things like that. I felt like he did like just a really great job of kind of inspiring everybody, including ourselves. Like, and you know, uh, our ability to assess, to treat uh, soft tissue dysfunction. And I thought he was very honest on not knowing the exact mechanism of what it was and uh, and basically swerved into that and kind of like where the, the research was heading. So those are um, some that just kind of stick out. I mean, there, there there's no turds in the bunch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was all... 
it's all I been it, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, how about this, Brett? Just look Gervais, at this. I mean, as far as just like overall. That's where I was going with this is, is one thing that we started. I, I was just looking at where we actually started to travel a lot. Our first big travel uh, was to go see Michelle. So, right. so, okay. so we went to Boston. Uh, so we sat down with, with Tom and his, at his office, we did two parts with him. And then we also, uh, interviewed George while we were there. And so that was kind of our first thing. It was the heart of COVID. I remember it was just a little bit weird with the COVID and travel and we didn't really know what to expect. And, uh, it was an awesome experience. I got to go to a Red Sox game, uh, had a connection and remember. <laughs> so here's a funny story that you guys all appreciate. Nobody watched them, but, uh, I used to do travel videos for all these. So if we would go on a vacation or, you know, I so called vacation we'd go on a trip to, to record and i would record a bunch of stuff along the way and put together the music or whatever so we're in boston and uh your one of your old uh players uh randall gritchick uh hooked us up with some tickets at the red sox at that point and uh so there's nobody there because it's COVID. nobody not a single person in there basically and they happen to have gluten-free beer which if you guys know brett and i we, we both have celiac disease so we don't eat gluten so they had gluten-free beer right behind home plate at Fenway Park, which is insane. And so and no lines, no lines. Board. Yeah. So we, we may or may not have had a few of those, uh, yeah, watching it. Sure. And, uh, it just so happened Gritch hit one over the green monster. And, uh, so we have video of it and everything. And, uh, I was screaming at the top of my lungs and we Gritch, were, we were, yeah, it was just uh, an absolute blast. But then, uh, we turned right around for, uh, probably one of my favorite trips was uh to la uh-huh yeah that was yeah so was i mean we we great great interviews with michael gervais obviously which i mean if you guys haven't listened to gervais i mean talk about if something gets you up out of bed every morning i mean that was so awesome he challenged us in his own awesome way and uh made us feel special in our own cer- certain way and uh, j- just a cool lot of good memories some memories we can't even tell on this podcast but uh you know just some good stuff that uh that happened on that trip and then right into to lynn fay yeah so i think one of my most prized possessions is we have a video on youtube right now of him adjusting both of us i mean that's going to be something yeah, that i'll funny. remember forever oh, of, yeah. of him going through and assessing and how how specific he was with his palpations and how you know he's still seeing patients to this day it's, it's just and i process. i know not not everyone who listens to this is uh, you know utilize the manipulation or a chiropractor but but if you are I, th- I that is one that like most of our chiropractic friends reference their students to because lynn kind of tells the whole story and uh even though it was a little bit historical, it definitely was never boring. And I mm-hmm. think, uh, in honestly, it, a little bit like Leahy's was, is very motivating in the palpation part and how you're, you're basically, you're on this crusade or journey to get, get good at what you're doing. I thought that he did, he did a really, really good job there. And, uh, and then we had the Craig's, which was good. And mm-hmm. yep. it was, a, that was a Craig. successful. Yeah. And trip. then we, then we probably laid that right into a, probably my favorite trip. I said LA was one of my favorites. This was my absolute favorite trip. The back hills of Virginia. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> so, was, uh... I mean, we, we got an opportunity to go to, uh, Greg Cook's cabin in the woods and, uh, we paddle boarded, we, uh, drank wine, we drank moonshine, we, uh, drank more moonshine. We drank more wine. Uh, we played bags. We oh man, we <laughs> we swung. swung we, we had everything. a guy's trip basically. Oh my gosh, what a! It, but not only that, but I mean, the three episodes we we recorded with him were so dense and so good. I and mean, I know, and we didn't really know it at the time, and uh, and I mean, I had presented at the same weekends as Gray before, so I mean, we always talked about doing it, and then we just finally picked a date and. Uh, it, it was just, I mean, yeah, I'll never forget those days. It was so much fun. Hearing you two talk about the abdominal wall and some of the things like that is, is things that are kind of ingrained in my memory. And I mean, it was just insane. The, the one thing about that too, I mean, unfortunately, maybe fortunately, uh, that first night when, you know, we hadn't, nothing was being recorded, but I mean, we had so many really good, uh, conversations and, uh, it, I mean, you know, he's the son of a, of a Baptist preacher. So, I mean, like he... I think he did. He does a very, very good job of articulating function, what he sees in function, and uh, and I, I think he, he tells he tells an amazing story of his pathway. Absolutely, so, yeah. Then we parlayed that into Chicago. This is probably our most dense podcast trip. So we uh, we sat down with Robert Lardner for basically three hours. We cried in that one. Yeah. So I mean, he was getting emotional and uh, talking. He was about great. All- he he had that would be. 
And I forget the one that everybody comments on as being their favorite. Is either the first or the second one? I think it was the first one. The first one. So uh, that's one that, you know, everybody says, like, that was one that, like, I just thought Robert did so good Mm -hmm. uh, on those, uh, both of those. But he really did a good job, too, of, you know, just kind of really explaining what function is in his mind, explaining the whole, the you know, trigger points, what that means. And I mean, we were all candidly honest about like, you know, what, you know, we are, you know, obviously enamored with DNS, but like, you know, what are some things we need to maybe work on in the future with DNS? I mean, I thought, you know, it was a very just honest, great podcast. Yep. And I mean, Annie O'Connor was great. Oh, we Annie was st- insane. Started it with you two singing. I remember if you remember <laughs> oh, that. Goodness. We had music playing. It was off the rails. And I ended Tom Lotus, which was great. We got a chance to shadow him at Rush. Terry Elder, which I know is a huge mentor of yours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my best friend, Jake Alec. I mean, that was that was fun. That was the then. end of that trip. Yeah, we, we definitely were on fumes at that point. Frankfurt. And then, I mean, we've had so many good MBT instructors. But then one that's special to me and one that I'll, I'll remember forever was Justin Thon Weekend. We sat down with Carl. So yeah, that's right. Dr. Cleveland, I mean, uh, you know, the story I always tell about Dr. Cleveland is, uh, you know, you roll into Cleveland and I, I went to Cleveland University in Kansas City and he memorizes every single student's name. And he still to this day will remember students' names and stuff like that. And it, I, I just think it's it's a lost art of making people feel important, you know, uh, not only that, but he's a great leader. And uh, I mean, his family is, has carried the torch for the last hundred years, literally. So uh, it, I was, that was, a I just think too, he, and I mean, I would throw Bill in this category also, but like, uh, you know, he, I was honored to speak at the bicentennial thing and you helped out with that workshop. I mean, uh, you're a no brainer cause you're a Cleveland grad, but I thought it was really awesome to bring in somebody that, I mean, I graduated from Logan. I didn't go to Cleveland. So, I mean, I thought that said a lot about him and, uh, he's a sneaky, really good, inspiring, motivating speaker. Yep. Like he, I don't think he gets enough credit for, yep. Um, how good of a how good of a public speaker he actually he actually is, and he he's got so many stories because of his family. Yeah. Like I mean, being in the front row with uh, with uh, BJ, yeah. Um, and, I mean, remember he, the cigarette smoke, the, the cigar smoke, smoke, and I mean, like yeah. all the different you know you know names in Cairo that he's been around. It's just uh, it's amazing. That's it. And, and so then we kind of finished the the year in 2021 with. We had all the Injustathon speakers. We were in Boca Raton with Kevin Christie. We had Erica Boland here, which is awesome. We were with Audra Lance, which is one of our favorite people. Uh, yeah. She's been such oh, an awesome, yeah. awesome person to us. And then we finished it with uh, with Thomas Shout again with the Clinical Quickfire. So that one, we literally wrote up 10 things on the board. And after we had been teaching all, you guys have been teaching all weekend we drank some more wine and then we didn't went through 10 diagnoses and he basically just quick got fired off two minutes of just absolute clinical gold yeah. for everything in the lower extremity. I mean, it was insane. He basically threw it up. It was, oh man, yeah. that's crazy. So, uh, that was our, our 2021. I mean, what already just, if you put that 2021 up, I mean, I think I could die happy of this, uh, or things. And yeah, then, that was a good one. and then we, we rolled into 2022. We were back here where we're at right now. We're in Phoenix. We're in uh, Mesa for, for a couple courses at the Cubs facility. And we were with Antonio Stecco. First time we met him uh, last January and uh, was very insightful. It was a great course, but then an insightful podcast with him and PJ uh, about his family. I mean, the craziest story about him, his father was the first physical therapist in Italy. I mean, that's insane. His license number was one. So talk about history. I mean, that's I think too, and I mean, he, we asked him some difficult questions. I remember asking him, you know, what w- does he feel like there's a difference between like the Travell and Simmons described trigger point versus the densification and the fascia. And he was very, very candidly, you know, honest and just was like, you know, we, we don't know exactly or decipher it exactly that way. And, uh, I just thought that he was, he was just so honest and then, uh, kind of talking about the mechanism of densification of tissue and also exposed, you know, they they actually have more research than people realize. Yeah. So, um, you know, they, he talked about actually being able to see the densification and the lack of sliding on a uh, diagnostic ultrasound and how potentially that could be, you know, the future of starting to prove what we're actually doing in soft tissue dysfunction. I thought, I thought it was shockingly good. Yeah. He'll be back in uh, in Troy in March. So we're yeah. excited to learn more from him and, and see him again. So 
That's definitely, I mean, we talked about Leahy and, and I, I still feel like there's such good application for both of those systems, which again is what Gestalt is all about. It's, you know, you can choose your own adventure there, whether you're going down the ART route, but it's still beneficial to understand how the fascial system can have adhesions and a different way to approach it. And the, I mean, the Steco system, if we're a hundred percent honest, it's been the one of the harder systems for us to really kind of integrate exactly the way that it was originally proposed to us or shown to us. So we're, you know, we're, that's one we're definitely working on. We're utilizing it. I mean, every, I mean, probably every visit <laughs> with a lot of our patients. And then we're still kind of working on the the system of it for sure. Mm -hmm. The one I forgot is our first round with uh, Dave King. So yeah, he's, uh, I mean, he's our favorite surgeon in St. Louis, one of our favorite uh, yeah, in St. Louis. Superstar. And I mean, he, he really, uh, he spoke at our DNSC course for the last two years in a row about hip impingement. And, uh, I mean, he is an absolute artist and listening to him describe how he gets in and reshapes the, the floral head and the neck and things like that. Like it's, it, it's just a, that was another inspiring one about being, uh, confident, but not boastful, uh, being confident in what you're doing and then expressing that to your patient. And then, I mean, uh, we can't, we got some that have already been done that, I mean, we're, we're he's one of them, but we got some other ones that I think are going to blow people's minds. But, uh, the other thing that the one that uh, Dave did that was coming out was about hip dysplasia. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Dave was smart enough to know that a year ago he'd already talked with us. So he totally tweaked his podcast. We always have him speak at our C course. And, uh, but he totally, you know, he basically just gave a completely different lecture without us even asking him to do that yeah. and then turned right around. And I mean, gave so much clinical gold on that podcast, which hasn't come out yet, but it, yeah, it's exactly. coming. We got so much in the works. I get a little anxiety about what we got sitting around, which is awesome. But, uh, and then, I mean, we finished up our, our January with, uh, Matt Leonard. Uh, I know one of your, your favorite people, your yeah. students oh, yeah, yeah. worked with just you and, uh, that he just got promoted. He just had his last year of, or his first year with the Cardinals as their head PT, which is awesome. But then we went right into Ken Crenshaw, which I mean, if you work in major league baseball, you somehow have a connection to Ken Crenshaw. Yeah. I mean, he's like this, what is it? Five degrees of Kevin Bacon. I yeah. Mean, he is, he's the, he's he, the guy. or better said Bill Belichick. Yeah. He's yeah, there. exactly. The coaching tree. So, uh, that one was honestly motivating too. We honestly, we didn't really talk anything about clinical stuff. We talked about motivating people. How do you manage them? Yeah. How do you, uh, how do you continue to give your, your people around you a step up? And, you know, like he had great perspective on, he had some people leaving and, and have people that are, have now the, had training jobs, but he views it as more of like a, a reflection to him. And I, I just think that's a cool thing to, to think of it. So true leader. Uh, so then, in, I mean, now we're into 2022, Brett, it's hard to believe, but then uh, we spent some time with Aaron McGuire. We saw Troy Van Beesen in Dallas. Uh, we've been in Jupiter with David Donatucci and Mickey Masuki, which are awesome. And then we were at uh, Parker in Vegas, which uh, is another insane story. I mean, we we got a room at the at Caesars overlooking the pool and we set up our podcast thing in our room and we literally had an entire day where we drank champagne and interviewed people, which was just so much fun. Sat down with uh, Don Dishman and I mean, talk about a guy that knows his neurology. Oh, yeah. And that was absolutely amazing. Brandon Steele, Jason Holm. And then we had one that really, uh, it was on a whim that we got this one. Yoav. So, yeah, Yoav. So uh, another shout out to my, my good friend, Jake Alec, who hooked us up with that. And I mean, I, I thought he gave such good clinical pearls on MVT principles and, and uh, treatment. And uh, I just thought that was really fun. Well, I mean, a lot of the chiropractors are listening. They may or may not be familiar with some of these MDT names, but I mean, Yoav's definitely, you know, one of the, you know, he's kind of on the Mount Rushmore of like the current MDT instructors that are just doing an unbelievable job. And I mean, we've had uh, our MDT lineup for those of you who are into oh, McKinsey yeah, Institute insane. has been absolutely amazing. So Mark Miller, um, Yoav, Urbawi. Urbawi, uh, Dave Oliver, who, uh, yeah, is up there. I mean, it, yeah, just, uh, amazing. Uh, we had Capo on too. That was a great trip in Dallas when we have, or in Austin, oh, yeah. Austin. Capo Bianco. Yeah. We talked about rock tape and all those other things. And then Brett, the one that I know that you were, I think you were the most excited for getting to sit down with Gary Gray, because at the time yeah. we didn't have anything scheduled. It was yeah. kind of on a whim. We got to go to his compound in in Michigan, and I mean, what a what an awesome experience that was. Well, I mean, my generation, we were all like just so enamored with Gary Gray, like we thought, uh, and still do. I mean, I still have the utmost respect for for Gary Gray. Like he was the father of function. He had, 
you know, kind of changed how we were all looking at like lower extremity biomechanics. And uh, he was just like introducing these thoughts that were just so foreign to us. Like, uh, you know, when you're treating functional rehab in your patients, you don't need a table. Like you, all you need is an empty room. Like, right. you know, and I mean, he, he truly is the father of function. I thought that, you know, when we did those podcasts too, I think he, he did such a good job of kind of like going through the story of like how he thinks and, you know, could we, the way we broke it up, I thought, uh, he did a good job with too, which was, there was an assessment, there's a treatment part and, uh, and yeah, I mean, it was just, it was special for me just because, you know, he was someone I always had really, you know, and still do look up to. And then it led to all kinds of stuff from there. I mean, we, you know, hung out with him at the MPI Gates seminar this year and got to teach with him there and met his son, got to know his son, yeah. Doug, which is awesome. And yeah, it was just a, good yeah, experience. It was a great experience. Just looking back, I mean, think of all the places that we've been able to be. I mean, that, that's one of the things that we we challenged ourselves with was to try to go to people's environments and to try to be see how, you know, the, how they set up their offices, how they set up their spaces, where they work, what are the books that they read, you know, like little things like that that I, sometimes don't get conveyed in the podcast that we've been so lucky to be able to be around. It, it's, it's just cool. I think the most random eclectic library that we've seen would be David Seaman. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I Dave, mean, if you're listening, is... yes. His, his like storage room garage full of just... I I mean, more thing than you could even think of. Books and books and books. And, and papers. Books. And, and cool books, too. Oh God, yeah. 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 Just amazing. So, uh, and then we were in uh, Colorado. So, uh, one of your favorite weekends, I know, of one of mine. It's yeah. turned into one of mine, which is when we're in Breckenridge. And, uh, you know, Petra is always there, which you're a huge sw- uh, skier. I, I I used to be, I'm really not anymore, but Petra and her husband, uh, ski like crazy. They so you, ski. Yeah, yeah you, they can definitely ski. And, uh, we had an absolute blast. So, uh, we interviewed her the night after, uh, we had, we had a special night. The seminar was over and, uh, we, we had a special night and there, uh, there might've been a dance party. There, there was definitely a dance party. On. So, uh, but then that, that, that trip too, you sat down with Sean Eno, who has been building your orthotics mm, yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And, I mean, you guys, I literally don't think I said a word in that podcast because I was, we were in his workshop. I mean, it was insane. It was mm. dusty and it was so freaking fun. But I mean, you guys basically broke down everything. You went through when you, when specifically you order orthotics, uh, how he's building them, how you guys communicate, what are the things functionally that you're looking for that was going to indicate that, how he custom makes all this stuff, why he chooses even the materials that he uses. I, I just thought it was such a good conversation yeah he was he is a superstar yeah so uh and then now we're into Leahy. we already talked about it but man oh man awesome trip i mean just a, another icon i think that's probably our our most underrated one yeah i think so i mean i think that the other thing too with mike like he just hasn't been on podcasts so i mean i think you know ever that's what everybody says like i just have not heard him in that format before mm-hmm. Uh, just cause he's, uh, either he's too busy or unwilling. He just hasn't done them. So, um, I think that's what made that one really special too. Cause we, you know, a lot of people, you know, that they just haven't heard him like talk in that, that setting before. Uh, I think an underrated one, you and Rich, Rich Holm, uh, it's been something kind of hot and heavy on your heart recently, you know, in the last year of uh, this whole general movement strategy, mm-hmm. meaning like we need to just tell our patients, slap them on the ass and say, you're going to be fine. Just go move your body. You know, your pain syndrome is going to go away. And you, I thought you guys outlined it, you de- debunked it, you gave your side of the story and, and just you know, kind of laid it out for everyone. Yeah. I mean, I think just to kind of recap, I mean, of course we all know how important general movement is. I mean, I think we have a literally a performance center in our office. Like we of course understand the importance of uh, moving our patients and, you know, using targeted exercise to also rehab our patients. We also understand the chronic pain world of getting people motivated to move their bodies. So, and in saying all that though, you know, there's still, you know, there's people that need that come to us because they've been hurt because, of their general movement right. strategy. So, uh, you know, being able to, you know, reconcile all those thoughts, which it's not for everybody. I mean, you got to like, you know, be good at your assessment to know what your patient needs. Some of your patients really don't need treatment. They need a dietary change. They need to be put on a walking program and uh, they need to be loaded up. Like a lot of our patients, they just need to, you know, get stronger and they need to lift weights. So the thing that nobody wants to hear is, I mean, the assessment is what kind of guides that whole process. And, uh, and I think that's uh, the missing link. You just don't go all binary and say, 
well, I'm only doing general movement strategy or I'm only doing manual therapy. It's always going to be a blend of all of those things together. And, and the best clinicians in the world, that's what they're doing. Yeah, that's right. All right. So now I have to take a pause here because if we don't mention two people's names specifically, we're going to get text message about it. You know who I'm talking about? No. Lindsay Muma and Erica Bolin. Yes. They're our favorite people on yes. earth. We have to shout them out. They're teaching their perinatal manual care course in Troy, April 15th and 16th of this year. We love them. We're so happy. We just hope to goodness that they don't get another tattoo when they're with us. Yeah. But, so that was, oh, that, yeah. I've read, heard that story. <laughs> if you haven't heard that's that. That's probably the craziest that thing. That is the craziest thing, but we'll, they, we'll see. They, but, we'll yeah. sum it up. They... Um, basically I gave them their credit, our credit card to go get dinner while they were teaching with us. And instead they went to the tattoo shop with our credit card and get a tattoo thinking that we wouldn't check our credit card statement. So, but then we, you know, took them out to dinner that night. It's nothing was said. And then we, uh, yeah. So then the next day you see something show up on the credit card bill and uh, that's how we found out. I mean, it, it, what an insane story. Just insane. Anyway, we love them. We hope you guys go to their course. It's really good. Uh, then we were with Kurt Kippenberger. Remember you taught a uh, you taught a state association at a pizza place? Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> that was one of my favorite memories. Uh, Shakespeare. So, yeah, that was Yeah, cool. well, it was kind of, you know, that's kind of a famous oh, yeah. pizza spot. No, so. I thought it was perfect for you, bro. Yeah, because that's my alma mater. So, it, it was... Well, there's a lot of irony there since I can't eat pizza, but <laughs> it is kind of a famous uh, Mizzou spot. So, oh, classic. And then we were in uh, uh, Orlando, Parker, Orlando. Yeah. So, uh, we were in Parker, Orlando. We got Josh Satterley, Jeff Lang made. Uh, we did Michael Shacklock via Zoom. It was a great time. But I think I've been waiting to talk about this one. My my most underrated one that we did was uh, establishing your it factor. It was just you and I talking, and, and you kind of went through something. You, you've been building this slide deck, basically, of, of how do you how do you separate yourself? How do you find what you're good at? How do you find your shtick when it comes to the treatment room? Because we know how important that is. And that was outlined in that episode. And I, I still go back and listen to it. I thought it was so damn good. Yeah, I think, you know, there's, there's some swagger that's involved with, uh, you know, I think the people that are in our circles, which is, you know, the evidence-based circles, the circles where everybody's trying to be great chiropractors or great physical therapists or ATCs. And then you kind of forget that, the messenger is also important. And, uh, those of you know me, I mean, I always tell all kinds of different stories about, you know, how important that is. But I think like, even like the guests that we've had, you know, like Annie O'Connor is so empathetic. So, you know, so easy to relate to. You got like a, you know, a Stu McGill, such a coach you have, uh, you have a guy like Mike Leahy, who is just going to hit you with so much confidence, you know? So, yeah, and certainly everybody's got their thing. But I mean, at the end of the day, there's, you know, 50% of your results will be determined on how well you're able to convey your message. And I think the the hardest thing for most uh, practitioners is to be able to come with uh, confidence and certainty and not get that mixed up with the other C word, which is cockiness. And, uh, and I mean, I think that's like always the fine line and, and part of that comes with experience. So the one thing like for the younger clinicians, you just can't rush experience cause you just don't have it, you know? So you have to be better at integration. You gotta be, you know, you gotta, you know, understand all our different techniques and things like that and when to use them and et cetera. But then, you know, you just don't have those 20 years that you can go back on like other mm -hmm. people can, you know, but in saying that also, I would say, and you've heard me talk about the baseballs, like the sabermetric or the stat where we could talk about um, uh, wins, wins above replacement, which is basically if you were to take a major league baseball player um, and you were to, you know, take them out of the game and replace them with a triple A player, what would the difference be? And a guy like Mike Trout, basically, he didn't win it uh, last year, but for the most part, he's usually the the guy that wins it. But in clinical practice, this is like a really good thing to think of. If you did not show up to work tomorrow and there was a try nine student that instead took your place, what would be the opportunity or what would be the, the like the difference between those two? And the, the thing, the other thing I always say to like kind of reverse mind F everybody on it is what if it was actually better without you there? What if it, what if one of these new hotshot try nine students was actually 
you know, delivering, you know, better, better service than, than what the, you know, the 40 year old clinician is. So, yeah. So, I mean, it can, it can definitely work both ways, but I think that's. What if Peter Roy's getting better results back in Troy than while we're gone right now? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we, we introduced a, a topic that, you know, we, we've been talking about for a long time, actually, this idea of silent derangements, which I thought was great, meaning just because your patient is not in pain doesn't mean you can't use the MDT principles of end range loading with joints that are stiff, meaning you're no better off. Walk, you're not better off walking around with stiff joints. Mm. Yeah. So, and I, I mean, I think that's always like a, a really understated thing with the, in the MDT, whereas, you know, you don't have to have, you know, ridiculous symptoms for us to throw you in the MDT hospital because really, I mean, the, the blend that I think or fusion that we sometimes call it that works really, really well is the principles of MPI with the principles of MDT, both in range loading and range games, if you will. So you, you know, you joint played in range, we manipulated in range, and obviously all the miracles of McKinsey are in range. Mike Leahy talks about all the miracles in ART at in range. Really, you know, a lot of the manual techniques are at in range. And then, you know, the one, you know, our big, you know, overreaching rehab uh, technique, which is DNS, is definitely more of a, you know, we talk about joint centration and things like that and why that's important. So at the end of the day, it is this, this fascinating puzzle that, you know, you just move these pieces around and it is so fun to see like where, you know, how everything fits. And, and that's been, you know, I think every year we kind of sit down and we're like, okay, we're going to do a deep dive here and kind of see, you know, what does this mean in our world? You know? And, and I mean, honestly, sometimes like, we'll look at something, we'll be like, yeah, uh, I just don't think this fits right now. I mean, we, I don't think we ever really like totally discount anything, no. but like, we're just like, yeah, we don't, we don't know exactly where this is fitting right now in our, in our model. Yeah. So. And sometimes it's just a matter of just setting it aside for a little bit and coming back to it. Yeah. It's kind of like your favorite toy when you're a kid, you know, you loved it so much for a long time. You set it aside and then a little bit later you come back to it and never know it might fit better. So your best friend starts playing with it. All of a sudden you get a little jealous. You're like, <laughs> um, and then, uh, we had obviously the other side of Kyra of Tim Bertelsman. Uh, the one that, well, I mean, a huge shout out, we already talked about Audra Lance, but she hooked us up with Thomas Bird, which I mean, talk about an awesome interview. That was so much fun. Uh, we, they took us out to, uh, on the town in Nashville the night before. So we were, you know, a little bit tired when we woke up the next morning, but, uh, I mean, talk about an easy way to get up. We're just tired. Yeah. Easy way to get up is to, to go see Tom Bird, which if you don't know who that is, I mean, he's probably the second most famous hip surgeon in the world. Yeah. I mean, uh, when it comes to that and, and, uh, the cool thing with him is, uh, what I took away from it was how conservative he thinks, meaning he is very tied in with his head PT. Uh, he's very tied in with using conservative things to try to avoid surgery. But when the surgery is necessary, uh, similar to Dave King of, of talking about it, like almost like an artist, like visualizing how the hip should be moving while he's in surgery and things like that. I mean, the was, other shocking thing with all of our surgeons, which we've basically had, you know, a lot of the top, top ones in the world, is that how humble they've all been? I yeah. mean, you talk about people that are willing to learn from their mistakes and, uh, you know, the humility uh, in their world. And I mean, I thought uh, Dr. Bird, I mean, his gold medal was that. Like, yeah. Yeah. there was zero ego. With him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, zero. He basically was like, you know, this is what I think we're, you know, I mean, he even said, like, right now, this is what we're probably need to do a better job of and, you know, like what it looks like moving forward. And I thought, yeah, that was, or that was really good. I always forget about that one. It was a really good one. Yeah. It was yeah. a great, I mean, great, great back set uh, or backdrop with, with his office and stuff. Yeah. It was, it, it was, it was per, pretty awesome. Um, then we made our way to Pittsburgh. So another great trip. So yeah, that was good. We got the VIP treatment from uh, our boy Rick Bishop. Which uh, you talk about a story of humility and grit and grind. I mean, my goodness, he we our podcast. I'm looking at the link. It was 38 minutes, and uh, I mean that dude worked his literal ass off to get to. The, <laughs> oh, so he basically, uh, if you haven't listened to it, I mean he he was the one that started uh, Professional Baseball Chiropractic Association uh, Society, and his team was the last one to add a chiropractor. So he had went through and helped all these other teams 
get the chiropractor in on staff and uh, the pirates were the last one to add him, which is just so ironic. But uh, he still to this day drives, uh, you know, in, into town. I think he's got like an hour and a half drive to the stadium. And uh, he started by treating the other side of the uh, other side's players. And I mean, in like just, literally like a mop room. Yeah. I mean, just a mechanical closet. Yeah. Yep. So I just thought, man, oh man, that was so cool. And then he, I mean, he literally gave us the VIP treatment. I mean, we got a, a tour of the, the stadium. We got to go to BP and, uh, yeah, it was just a, an awesome. We did the awesome. podcast in the press conference room. Yeah, yeah, exactly in the press room. Uh, and then uh, your buddy Brad Scott was there too. So yeah. the Braves were in town, which uh, I, I thought he did a great job of, of talking about how he manages load throughout the season, uh, how he manages egos when it comes to load. I mean, it, I just thought it was a really good lesson on on uh, how you manage that much stuff. Which he's he's the. Head yeah, I mean, they were coming off. Didn't they win the World Series? They so they were coming off the World Series. So, I mean, he had some good. Yeah. Uh, insight on winning teams and yep. how to be a team player. Absolutely. We had Mike Schneider while we were out there, talked about the future. Uh, that was a sneaky one. Like lo- people love that mm-hmm. podcast. Yep. And I know like, a, I think a lot of people didn't really understand like what Michael is doing at mm-hmm. university of Pitt and how that is potentially going to turn the profession on its head. If that were to all go through exactly the way that people think that it might. And, uh, so I, I remember uh, my brother-in-law is a chiropractor, Bar Coleman. He he like literally called that one out. He's like, I cannot believe what this guy's creating mm-hmm. at uh, University Good. of Pittsburgh. Yeah. And uh, then we were in Troy. Uh, our, our good friend, Marcella, uh, poor, poor lady, she's been dealing with some medical issues and wasn't able to travel. And so uh, Martina stepped in for us, I mean, on a whim, flew yeah. into Troy to teach the pediatrics course. And uh, we sat in your backyard in front of the fire and uh, she dropped so many knowledge bombs. I mean, she, it, it was based on DNS, but I mean, we talked about all sorts of freaking awesome stuff. Scoliosis, Pelvic, pelvic yoga, floor. scoliosis, pediatrics. Oh man, it was awesome. It was so brilliant. yeah, really good. And then we talked, uh, uh, we were with Mark King, kind of talked about the the future of motion palpation institute we talked about you know it's been a huge it, it is our core forward it's the thing that got you and i hooked up together it's a, it's been the bedrock for basically everything oh, that you man. and i have done i mean period oh, gosh, yes. uh we wouldn't we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them so uh and then we had michael in in troy so on a whim he uh we, he was in troy in october after not being able to travel for so long and we did two episodes with him we did that clinical quick fire similar to what we did with michaud where we went through the the most common diagnoses and and basically he broke down the literature the uh, the proper testing and treatment ideas for each of those things in, in a quick, quick two, three minute setting. So I thought that was great. So yeah, me too. And then, then we talked about the misconceptions of neurodynamics. So which there's a ton. Oh my gosh, it was insane. So yeah, we, we talked a lot about that. Uh, we were at MPA gate where we had Gary gray kind of going off on, on a whim, t- watching people walk. We had Michelle. Well, Cause talking. I mean, we had, you know, it was, I was representing DNS, but we had, you know, Gary Gray and Thomas Shout in the same room also. So, I mean, like it was, that was a, that was a interesting, yeah, it, was it was good. It was, it was, it was awesome. not how I expected it to go, but no, it, was, it, was it, was, it turned out yeah. awesome. So if you tune in the, the start is him talking like Donald Duck. He was singing, singing someone in, in the yeah. crowd, happy birthday. So it, yeah, it was insane. Uh, and then we had, uh, the mobility chick, Tracy Hayes, who's taking the baseball world by fire. And she's got a new book coming out that Brett, uh, co-wrote a chapter in about DNS baseball and baseball concepts. Uh, and then, uh, uh, the craziest trip we've probably ever taken north of the border. So, oh yeah, wasn't really sure what to expect. Didn't know what the protocols were or anything. We were kind of just hoping and praying that we were fine. We flew into Toronto. We got in late. We hopped in the car and drove three hours north to this little tiny town in the middle of uh, of Canada to, to Stuart McGill's house. And uh, we got to sit down where he interviews patients, where he treats them, and got to meet his dog, Tico, and his wife. And uh, it's just, man, oh, man. What a cool experience that was. Yeah, it was a great day. That was, it was, yeah, that was just really special. And then we, uh, I think too, I like, I, I had my own misconceptions about, uh, Stu and his work and I thought he laid them out, uh, so well and and articulated his thoughts so well. And I, I was just blown away by that one. So, and then your I think your favorite one that we've ever done was Mark Ciappatici. You already kind of talked about it, but uh, talked about dry needling, soft tissue, all sorts of just awesome things. Well, I mean, I think Mark is one of those guys that have like, especially in the last, we'll say 10 years, has definitely like flown under the radar. And uh, I mean, he has, you know, he, he just gave, I think, so much like heartfelt clinical pearls 
that, you know, that, uh, you know, haven't been said before, you know, by him or by, he's another one that's just not on any podcast. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think, I think he, in my, my mind, he's one of the more underrated chiropractors in the world by far, by far. So then we had, uh, George Paletta, your guy, George Paletta, the, the St. Superstar. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. yeah. Team physician. Complete superstar. He, he was literally off of a, a shoulder replacement. I mean, what was it? Two weeks or something like that? No, no, no. That, it was that week. That's right. Yeah. That was that week. So yeah. he still, that, was that Monday. Yeah. Still came in and talked to the, the DNSC course and then sat down for our podcast and, uh, just, just a special human being, uh, just, uh, just an amazing surgeon. And again, I, he, you know, and I, I knew, you know, cause him and I had talked a lot through our careers of like, you know, and you know, sometimes you just can't help some bad circumstances. I feel like he went through and like kind of discussed like what that means and these inflection points in your career and how, I mean, you can either crawl in a hole or you can, you know, let that, you know, kind of be a catalyst for you springboarding into something else or something different, or, you know, just making yourself better or however you want to say it. And that podcast was, uh, so many people like side text me on that. Just like, Whoa, I could, that was not what I was expected. That was, that was really good. So, yep. and then we finished out the year, we kind of did them out of order, but I thought it was, uh, good to do was your college buddy, yeah. Corey, Corey Carl- Carlson. Yeah. So we kind of tail end, uh, the last episode of the year, personal development. The first episode of the, of 2023 was, uh, Mark King about practice management, but, uh, I thought Corey was great. He's a best-selling author. Um, we, we talked about the difficulties that we all face being high achievers of sometimes like shit just falls apart at home. Sometimes you get a little overextended. Uh, in his case, it got a way overextended, but, uh, you know, it's just a great story of persevering and getting, getting your priorities right when it comes to work life and the balance that that needs to be. Yeah. And I think that, you know, you know, everyone who's listening to this is going to fall into the same category, just like we do. Whereas, you know, you are so trying to just, you know, be on this, this journey and crusade to be great at what you're doing. And, uh, but then, I mean, in saying that also, I mean, everyone is also trying to be a great spouse. You're trying to be a great dad. A lot of us are co- trying to coach our kids. And then at the end of the day, and we talk about in the podcast, like, this is, you know, so subtly happening that you don't realize it until like, like it happened to me where you wake up one day and you're like, I am doing, I can't do this. Like literally like this is, I am one step. To, like, you only know you're too far to you too far as they say. Right, but, right. um, and I think that, you know, Corey did a great job of kind of explaining what, what like actual work-life balance actually looks like. And we kind of went through some different analogies of, you know, what that actually means and, Um, yeah, so I think that, and I think that's an important point because without like a good, you know, without, without a good home life, I mean, you, you you know, people, we've seen it all before, like it it makes it a lot harder for people. So, I mean, I think whatever we can do to, to make it better at home and be leaders at home also. And I think he did a good job of, of, uh, of exposing all those things probably. I agree. Uh, I'm going to leave it with our, our number one episode of all time. Drum roll, please. It, it's Thomas Shouts, Human Locomotion. Part the most one. listened. Yeah. yeah, the most listened to, most downloaded. So that was released on May 25th, 2021. So uh, Tom is probably one of our favorite people. God, I love that man. And uh, he's done so much for us. Uh, we're still sitting on some content that we got to figure out a way to, to get out to people. Uh, but anyway, that, that I, I just think he's just a superstar human being, superstar clinician, superstar researcher. He's, just, he's problem just solver, good. author, artist. He's literally the jack of all trades. So, and then I mean, yeah. So the reason there's so many listens is because so many of our friends at the Cairo school is like that is required listening for their students. Like the, right. he did such a good job of kind of summing up the biomechanics of the lower <laughs> extremity that people are like, just listen to this. Yeah, I don't, you don't need me anymore. <laughs> yeah. just, li- just I, I've downloaded it a couple times myself. So I think I, I've listened to it a couple times. Yeah. Oh yeah. But that's uh, a good job. Anyway, guys, I, I hope you enjoyed us just kind of rambling on. I mean, I just think like, uh, Brett, I, I'm so thankful for everyone that tunes in and reaches out to us, shares it on Instagram and things like that. Like, it's just, sometimes it's, it's not easy. I, everybody thinks that traveling and doing these stuff is easy and fun. And it is, it is a blast, but it's also a lot. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time doing this and, and getting the feedback really, uh, makes us, you know, know that we're, we're hopefully impacting the world slowly but surely and, and, uh, getting some of these names out and, and, uh, putting the, putting the information. Well, you get, I think you get so busy, like with your day and practice and things like that. And that, Sometimes you just feel like you're literally talking to a microphone, but then like you get it back out on the rail. Like I'll be at a state association. I mean, 
you, people come running up like, oh my gosh, I love this. You know, and it's yeah. what I love is when people like say, oh my gosh, the episode that I love. And what's so fun, I mean, it, it's different for everybody, mm-hmm. you know? And I mean, that's because, it, it, you know, you have your moments when you're like, this is a little much. I, <laughs> I, there's no way I can continue to do this. And then like, you know, like today, I mean, yeah. where everyone's like, oh gosh, we're listening to your podcast. It's so awesome. And uh, and that makes you want to keep doing it because, yeah. you know, it would, it, it, you know, you get to a hundred, you could be like, because what's the the survival rate of like a podcast. Like once you get to like a majority of them don't get beyond, I don't know what episode it is. So 25 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, uh, we've definitely surpassed that and we're not, I don't think we're, we're not even close to shutting this thing down. In fact, we just keep getting more ideas, more people wanting to be on it. And, uh, that's, that's where it's at right now. Yeah. So I just think like, uh, if we had to ask ourselves our own question that we ask everyone, what's the, what's the, this podcast like in five years? I, I don't, I don't think we shut it down. I think we, we continue to, we, we've got some ideas of some, uh, uh, some ways to incorporate some past guests to get new people involved, to, to do those types of things. And so I, I think it's just going to continue evolving and, and, uh, keep growing. And, uh, it's just going to be, you know, part of our lives from here on out, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, I think that, you know, is, and, and I always have like regret afterwards. So I'm like, oh, I forgot to, you know, ask him this. So there's a, I mean, you could almost just like, uh, run back the guests just to in, you know, kind of cover some things or like expand on some thoughts that were said that you listen to it again. You're like, oh, wow. I wish we should have just, you know, yeah. Went all in on that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, I, I think if I can close it with a couple things that one, when we started this podcast, we were recording from my phone with lavalier mics and, and now we got these dumbass mics in our face and I'm wearing headphones and we got a recorder and I'm using AI software to clean up the, the volume and stuff. And we still got people that are commenting on YouTube and stuff like that about, wow, you put the light in here and stuff like that. But <laughs> just know, I mean, we're, this is, we're, we're, we seem like we got it all together, but it's kind of still a fly by the night operation. It's a little rough. It's uh, this is not my primary gig, and I don't intend it to be. And and no, we're not hiring anyone else out because we can't afford to to pay for their wine like ours. So <laughs> we're too selfish. Yeah, we never right. share. That's wine. right. No, but uh, but anyway, we're we're just gonna keep pressing along. And what I would love is if you listen to this episode and you know we, we reminded you of a couple guests or a couple things, reach out to us, uh, share on your Facebook, share on your your Instagram story, uh, tell people what lesson you learned? What episode did you learn the most from? Was there one or two things that have stuck with you that maybe you continue to remind yourself with? Or maybe you got a great case study that something one of our guests said that like it all clicked and that was the next thing. Uh, share those with us. We would love to hear from it. Uh, number one, we would would love to, to to push your story out there so that other people can learn from, from what you learned. And uh, we, we, we want to build a community is what I'm trying to say. We want people to learn from each other and to be a part of this. Uh, we don't want to just be two idiots up here with a microphone. We want to we want to build a community and want you, we want you guys involved. And so, like Brett said, if you see us at, at an airport or you're at one of the courses, come up and tell us what your favorite guest was or little things like that. Like those, those are the things that we really enjoy. And uh you know, for, for all of our guests, we appreciate you. We love each of you. And, um, yeah, I, I just thank you. Thank you all for, for sticking with us for a hundred episodes. Yeah. Thank you to our guests. And also thank you to all the listeners, because we always say it is literally the only thing in the world that is actually free with no, no strings attached. <laughs> no strings so, attached. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, uh, with that being said, uh, here's to another hundred Brett. Yes. And, uh, well from, done, sir. From there, guys, uh, thanks again. And uh, whatever we can do to help you guys in the, in the future, if you got any ideas for guests or anything like that, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, as always, tag us on Instagram. It's just at Gestalt, ED, or Gestalt Education. Um, mine's at Dr. Taylor Premer. Brett's is at brett.winchester. So tag us on Instagram, tag us on those other places. And uh, if you guys are interested in coming to one of our courses or, or to hear, uh, learn from some other people, uh, visit gestaltedu.com backslash courses. And uh, there's all sorts of awesome stuff out there for you. Notably, we got a great DNS slate coming up in 2023. We got uh, Antonio Stecco, like I said, teaching uh Fashion manipulation. We got the perinatal perinatal manual care. We got something big cooking uh, down south that we haven't announced yet, but hopefully we'll have some more details with. So stay tuned for that. Outside of Gestalt, we got uh, obviously we got MPI rolling. We got uh, all kind. I mean, just all kinds of good stuff. Yep. Sports summits coming up. Yep, absolutely. So uh, TMJ. Yeah. Anyway, we babbled on enough. Wine's getting to me. We're out of here, guys. Have a great day. Good luck with patience and uh, make 2023 the best year ever. See ya. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Gestalt Education Show. Uh, if you liked it, share it, subscribe to it, uh, send it to your friends, send it to someone that needs to hear this message. Uh, we really want everyone to be able to, to tune in and, and get the, the best clinical advice that they can, which uh, we're hoping that we're giving to you with these special guests. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Or if you have any suggestions on upcoming uh, conversations, let us know. Uh, for a list of our upcoming courses, we're adding them all the dang time. So go to gestaltedu.com, click on courses, and they'll all be right there for you. All right, have a good day.